Hello, my name is Seth Winkler. Welcome to Theory 101. Today we're going to be discussing scales as well as key signatures. A scale is a sequence of notes that are ascending or descending in pitch. They also begin and end on the same note. They are different kinds of scales and we will be starting with the chromatic. In a chromatic scale, the notes are moving all in half steps or semitones. This is how it sounds. First ascending and then descending. In a whole tone scale, the notes move up or down in whole steps. This is how a whole tone scale sounds. First ascending and then descending. A scale is defined by the relationship of half and whole steps between the notes. The most common scale we use in our music is the major scale. In a major scale, note 3 and 4 as well as 7 and 8 are a semitone or half step apart. All the other notes are a whole step apart. In a major scale, none of the letter names are repeated. They are all used successively. This also applies to our minor scales. The notes of a major and minor scale can be identified by number. These numbers correspond to their place in the scale. Their location in the scale will determine what is called their scale degree. G, which is the fifth note of C major, is called the fifth scale degree. The numbering goes from bottom note number one to the top note, which is the octave number eight. The first degree is also known as the tonic, the second degree as the supertonic, the third degree as the median, the fourth degree as the subdominant, the fifth degree as the dominant, the sixth degree as the submedian, and the seventh degree as the leading tone. No matter what note you begin with in a major scale, the whole and half steps between the notes needs to remain consistent. Also, name notes are not repeated as discussed earlier, therefore sharps and flats will be included in most major scales. Looking at G major scale, for there to be a semitone between the 7th and 8th scale degree, F needs to be raised by a semitone, becoming F sharp. Looking at F major, you will see that in order for the 4th scale degree to be a semitone from the 3rd scale degree, it needs to be lowered by a semitone. This table illustrates the sharps or flats that correspond to their respective major scale. Next we have the natural minor scale. As you can see, in a natural minor there is a semitone between the second and third as well as the fifth and sixth scale degree. You will also see that the natural minor scale uses the same notes as a major scale, except that it begins on the sixth scale degree. This relation between the natural minor and the major scale is known as the relative minor. Here is a table that illustrates the relative minors of their respective major scale. Next we have the harmonic minor scale, which is similar to the natural minor, except that the seventh scale degree is raised by half a step. In the melodic minor, the ascending scale differs to the descending scale. The ascending melodic minor is a natural minor with a raised 6th and 7th scale degree.
in a descending melodic minor, the 6th and 7th scale degree are lowered to form a natural minor. The major and minor scales are fundamental to the music we play. Generally speaking, a song will have a connection to a certain major or minor scale. This is also known as the key of a song. Symbols are placed at the beginning of staves to indicate what key a song is in. These symbols are called key signatures. During a song, the key can change, known as transposition. Key signatures also assist us when we are writing music. If we are writing in the key of D major, instead of us having to write a sharp in front of every F and C, the two sharps of the key signatures notify us that all the Fs and Cs of this song will be sharp unless a natural sign is in front of a F or C note indicating that the note is a natural. Minor keys use the key signature of their relative major. A natural sign is needed for the harmonic and melodic minor forms. This concludes our third session. Um, next, we will be dealing with intervals.